Last month, Yuval Noah Harari, deemed the false prophet of the World Economic Forum, predicted that artificial intelligence would be capable of writing a new Bible, not before smearing the Christian Bible as an outdated book with no divine origin. You know, the printing press, radio, television, they broadcast, they spread the ideas created by the human brain, by the human mind. They cannot create a new idea. You know, Gutenberg printed the Bible in the middle of the 15th century. The, the, the printing press printed as many copies of the Bible as Gutenberg instructed it, but it did not create a single new page. It had no ideas of its own about the Bible. Is it good? Is it bad? How to interpret this? How to interpret that? Um, AI can create new ideas, can even write a new Bible. He goes on to say that these new ideas within the AI Bible would be more correct than any other religious text because they're derived from a superintelligence, a non-human entity. Because he denies the existence or inspiration of God, he says it's simply a dream to imagine God's divine inspiration behind the Holy Bible. You know, throughout history, religions dreamt about having a book written by a superhuman intelligence, by a non-human entity. Every religion claims our book, all the other books of the other religions, they humans wrote them. But our book, no, 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 no. It came from some superhuman intelligence. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct. That just think about a religion whose holy book is written by an AI. That could be a reality in a few years. Harari says that artificial intelligence can make decisions all by itself, the first technology that can do this, implying that this AI Bible would be written by free will rather than be dictated by the design of its programming. He sees AI as above human beings. And again, since Harari is an atheist, he places the AI technology above all human intelligence, elevating it to the status of a god in his eyes. The first eyes. technology ever that can make decisions by itself. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, all these worries about AI, every time there is a new technology, people worry about it, and afterward it's okay. Like when people invented writing and printing presses and airplanes, they were so worried, and in the end it was okay, AI will be the same. It's not the same. No previous technology in history could make decisions. You know, even an atom bomb actually empowered humans because an atom bomb can destroy a city, it cannot decide which city to bomb. You always need a human to make the decision. AI is the first technology that can make decisions by itself, even about us. Next, Yuval Noah Harari mischaracterizes what Christians have believed throughout time in order to illustrate why an AI metaverse would be just like heaven. Here he claims that ancient Christians believed their carnal bodies, their physical bodies, were held in highest regard. And you have this discussion for, you know, for, for thousands of years about what humans really are. Are they a, 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 an immaterial soul or an immaterial mind? Or are they embodied beings, embodied entities? And, um, this was a major philosophical topic that you see, say, in ancient Christianity, this discussion that Jesus and the first Christians, influenced by Jewish traditions, they believed very firmly that humans are bodies, which is why Christ rises in the body. He's resurrected in the body. However, Romans 8 clearly reveals the doctrinal position that ancient Christians believed, as well as modern day Christians. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So then they that are in the flesh, the body cannot please God. Harari then claims that Christ's heavenly kingdom is of the earth, boldly saying that Christ told his followers of a future physical kingdom. And when Christ initially talks about the kingdom of heaven, he means the kingdom of heaven on earth. He tells his followers that there'll be this perfect kingdom here on earth, you know, with trees and stones and people. But yet again, Christ's own words in the Holy Scripture says otherwise, like in John 18.36, my kingdom is not of this world. 
or Luke 17.20, God's kingdom is coming, but not in a way that you'll be able to see with your eyes because God's kingdom is within you. Then without citing scripture yet again, he states that Christians change their views to believe that their soul goes to heaven while their carnal body perishes. And he attributes this change in view to Plato. Over time, under the influence especially of Platonic philosophy, Christianity drifted away from this view of humans as embodied and placed greater and greater emphasis on the immaterial soul or mind. It imagined that the body is, is dirty, the body is animalistic, the body, there is something wrong with it. And uh, when you die, you are not coming back in the body. Your soul is liberated from the material body and it goes not to a kingdom on, on earth, but to heaven, which is a completely immaterial realm. So the Christian fantasy became to completely disconnect from the body. And this remained a fantasy for thousands of years. Although the Bible in the Old Testament teaches that a human soul is a physical body which God breathes life into, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So the soul of a man is the physical body and God's spirit together, not the mind versus body contrast that Harari references from Greek philosophy. Finally, Harari is almost trying to appeal to Christians, suggesting that an AI virtual world is essentially like heaven. And he says they should abandon their fantasy rooted in the Holy Bible in exchange for an artificial virtual simulation, which he argues would deliver the same result as God could in heaven. Now, with the technology of the 21st century, a lot of very ancient philosophical and theological debates are becoming practical. Now, with the technology of the 21st century, a lot of very ancient philosophical and theological debates are becoming practical. So, going with your example, let's say we, you have some teenager or some person, whatever age, yeah. sitting at home, never leaving home, in front of a screen, maybe with some 3D uh, glasses or something, they live their lives online. In a way, they are realizing the platonic ideal of disconnecting the soul or mind from the body. So, what do we see there? Is it a um, human being trapped within a room, losing connection to the real world? Or is it a human being liberated from the restrictions of the biological body with all its messiness and, and, and dirt and whatever, and liberating their spirit to wander around the immaterial heavenly realm of cyberspace. They are developing the mark of the beast now. Revelation 13, 16 through 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The Bible talks about the mark of the beast, which will be mandatory during the great tribulation. The mark of the beast will be an identity of the Antichrist, without which no one will be able to buy or sell anything. People will receive the mark on their right hands or on their foreheads. Now, what people don't consider is that taking the mark of the beast is a serious matter, a lot like how salvation is a serious matter. I say this because both taking the mark and salvation have eternal consequences. Salvation has eternal consequences and should be treated with the utmost importance. Taking the mark of the beast has eternal consequences and should not be taken lightly. Both hold eternal repercussions. Over the years, there have been a lot of conspiracies concerning the mark of the beast. Early last century, some people believed that the mark of the beast was your social security number, which presumably was encoded into the computer punch card of the beast and fed into Satan's mainframe. While the notion that your social security number is the mark of the beast is hardly mainstream, there are proponents of this viewpoint to this day who argue that it is. Following the introduction of the credit card in 1959, 
Groups of individuals argued that it was the mark of the beast. Once the internet was introduced, some argued that it was the mark of the beast. Presently, the radio frequency identification, RFID, chips are regarded by many as the mark of the beast. In 2020, there are some who argued that the vaccine was the mark. You can go down a long corridor of research attempting to pinpoint what exactly the mark of the beast is. One thing is for sure, the mark of the beast will not be something that you can take accidentally. What type of God would God be if he allowed the mark of the beast to be something you can take accidentally? It's exactly like the issue of hell. No one, absolutely no one, goes to hell by accident. God gives everyone the choice to accept the Lord Jesus Christ or reject him. God gives everyone the choice to go to heaven or to go to hell. And when the mark of the beast comes, those who are alive on the earth will know exactly what this mark represents. 